Father, we thank you, Lord, for gathering us here. Lord, we thank you for watching over us. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for your grace. Even as we share about making discipleship, oh Lord Jesus Christ, which is your passion, my God, we pray that your word will find room in our hearts. Every other voice, we shut it out in Jesus' mighty name. Speak to us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to share with you about making disciples, okay? Making disciples. You know, when we talk about making disciples, we think it is the church. But actually, it is the power of one. Every one of us has got a role to play. Okay? Look at Matthew chapter 28, which is actually the commissioning chapter, which the Lord gave us to launch Watume, Global Ministries. Okay? Matthew 28. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, that is the commissioning, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Based on the authority given to Jesus, he delegates it to us to go and make disciples of all na nations, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. And Lord, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. This is why we are going to Uganda. You see, I told you, and I will tell you again, I had planned that when I hit 50, I was going to retire, go to that devastated part of the nation. I tried to encourage those local pastors who were really struggling. But in 2011, when I came here, the Lord told me, no, don't retire. Refire. And plant a self-based community church that focuses on missions. And let me tell you, in the last three years that we've been going to Uganda, what could have taken us 30 years to accomplish? In the last three years, thousands of people have received the Lord Jesus. Hundreds of them have been, thousands have been baptized in that same river that they used to sacrifice children to. Only God can do that. God's ways are not our ways. And the team that is going to go, they are going based on this. And that's why we teach the children, we teach the youth, we teach the women, we teach the men, we teach the local leaders, as well as the pastors. We teach them to obey everything that the Lord has commanded us to do. Now, when we're talking about making disciples, because unless we're disciples, we can never ever become effective in the kingdom of God. God wants disciples, a follower of somebody who is a model through his lifetime, and we emulate. And Jesus showed us that. Okay? So we're talking about the power of one. The Bible is inundated with one, 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 one. Remember last week I said, if God wants to do something, God does not look for a committee. God looks for a willing, available person, a clean vessel, and God uses that person. Paul the Apostle, when he was being challenged, why he was calling himself an apostle? In Galatians chapter 1, he says, Paul, an apostle, called by God, not by man. Okay, it is God who calls, and he chooses you and he equips you. And here we see in Luke 15, Jesus himself was talking about a parable of how important every person is. We're told that we must never ever reduce people, souls to numbers. No, everybody is important in the sight of God. We could not just go, you know, crop people and then forget about other people. No. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost and finds it? And that is why, you know, we say first time visitors, write your name. We want to make a follow up on you. How are you doing? How can we pray with you? Okay? Because the steps of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord. You are not here because you wanted to be. God Almighty was behind the scene. Okay? Ordering your footsteps. So you are here on an assignment. Look at Joshua chapter 23 verse 10. One man of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God is he who fights for you as he promised. That's why we always say here, yeah, you're going to do it, you're going to like it, you're going to say thank you. Because it is God in you, the hope of glory. It is Christ that is working. So don't say, oh, we are too few. And no, 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 no. no. One with God is the majority. You see, I always say, and I will say it again, when it comes to the kingdom of God, it is not democracy, it is theocracy. One with God is the majority. Look at the prophets. 
The whole of Israel had turned away from God, but they remained faithful and true. And the Lord protected them, and the Lord turned things right side up because they were pleading and crying for, with God. And God is looking for such men. I look for a man who can stand in the gap, but he said, I found none. I pray this year you will be that person. Okay? And then look at 1 Samuel chapter 14. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come on now, let's go across to those uncircumcised pagans. Maybe God will work for us. There is no rule that God says. Uh, that says God can only deliver by using a big army. No one can stop God from saving when he sets his mind to it. You see, it is Christ in us. It is Christ. So don't look down on yourself. You can, there's a role that you can play. And nobody can play it but you. Because that's what God fashioned you for. In Ecclesiastes 9, 15. Now they are living in a city. A man poor but wise. He saved the city by his wisdom. But nobody remembered the poor man. <laughs> you know, but God does not forget you. People can forget you, but God will never forget you. I'm telling you, remember the rewards, okay? In the days of the reckoning, there are going to be rewards given. And some are going to have crowns upon crowns. And people are going to be shocked. How? Yes, he was behind the scene, but with God, God never ever forgot what he was contributing in the kingdom of God. Okay? Now, <laughs> you see, Last week, we talked about setting smart goals. Smart goals. Now, if for the next three months, we are just to say, I'm just going to reach one person. Remember, each one reach one. Do you know that in three months, we'll double? What about in six months? We will triple. What about in a year? We'll quadruple. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in a year, and that's what happened to the 12 disciples. Each one of them was reaching out to somebody because they were disciples. And Paul, in his mission itinerary, says this in Acts chapter 17. Look at this one, and this is the scripture that I always love. Why Paul went around preaching, you know, a uh, missionary field work was birthed in Acts chapter. 13, when Paul, the Spirit spoke, and Paul decided to obey the Spirit of God, and they laid hands on him, and he took the gospel up to Europe, to Turkey, all those places, he did that, but there was a big change, people were burning their gods, hallelujah, just like Kambini Mission Base, <laughs> people are burning their idols, when the missionary team go there, and things were really turning for the glory of God. But there were some other people who rose up to oppose them. Whatever you do for the kingdom of God, we are at war. You are going to be opposed. But remember, your enemy is God's enemy. Because they are not fighting you. They are fighting God who sent you. And God is always the winner. God is always the winner. And so these guys came up and then they wanted to beat up Paul. But Paul had already escaped. But then they got Jason. And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brethren before the city authorities, crying, these men who have turned the world upside down have come here also. Actually, they were wrong. These men who have turned the world right side up. <laughs> Do you see how the society can be so warped in their thinking? You know, what is right has become wrong. What is wrong has become right. You see? And this is the world, the real world in which we live. If we just go by what we see, what we hear, we say, these are weird people. No, we are not weird. We are doing the right thing because the biblical culture is a culture of truth. Okay? It is a culture of truth. You see, as I said last week, I want to say it again. When God wants to do something, he will look for a person. Remember Abraham? He was available. He was willing. God made a covenant with him and God used him. What about Joseph? God gave him a dream. He was willing not to compromise. Even when he was tempted, he did not. It came to pass. He saved the whole world. Okay? What about Moses? A time when he, 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 this man was so mad killing children. That was the time when Moses was born. And that's why we are born in such a time as this. This COVID thing and all those kinds of things. Don't worry. Okay? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. God will watch over you. God will protect us. 
What about Samuel? The mother could not even conceive. But miraculously, just like I always say, every human being made in the image of God is a miracle. Yes. Why? Every one of us was conceived in the mind of God before we were conceived in our mother's womb. Because God has an assignment. What about David? An ordinary guy, written off. But when the Bible says, okay, in Psalm 78, that when he wanted to redeem his people, he looked for Joseph, for, for David, a man after God's own heart. And he picked him from looking after sheep and entrusted him with Judah and Israel to look after him. God can use anything. You remember, God does not use the qualified. He qualifies the call. The thing is, are you called of God? God will empower you. You will do it. You will like it. You will say thank you. Look at Jonah. He saved the whole city of Nineveh. One man. The whole city repented. He's the only funny evangelist. When he preached, guess what happened? The people got saved. And people went. And God, the man was so mad. <laughs> do you know why? Because the Syrians were very brutal people. Very brutal. They could skin you alive. Can you imagine? They could skin you alive. In fact, when the Bible says some was sown asunder, biblical scholars refer that to Isaiah, the prophet. He was with a wooden saw. He was cut into two. Can you imagine? And that's why God was saying, Aha, the Lord's judgment has now come. Lord, finish them. But they repented. There is no sin if we repent of that God cannot forgive us. There is no sin. Look at Ahab. When he humbled himself before God, God said, okay, no problem. Can you imagine? The wickedest, the wicked, the most wicked king in Israel, Ahab. Humility is what God requires of us. We need to humble ourselves before him. You know, it goes to Esther, it goes to Daniel, it goes to Nehemiah, Ezra, Paul, all those guys. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That's why I say, before you are conceived in your mother's womb, you are conceived in God's mind. For an assignment. And that's why he has directed you here. Okay? And we are here. And in verse 11 of Ephesians. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, what to the global ministry, our mission is very simple. I will say it again and again and again, because some of us are going to go on the mission field, but the church should flourish, hallelujah, because it's not a one-man show. Everybody has got a role to play. What to the global ministry exists to plunder hell and to populate heaven. By proclaiming the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ as each one of us reaches one, touching those around us with the love of Jesus. You might not preach, but you know what? When you show them love, it speaks louder. Action speaks louder than words. Our vision is so simple to raise the critical mass of envisioned, equipped, empowered, encouraged, and engaged Christian leaders in the seven spheres of influence. Our faith is not to be confined within the four walls of this building. No, we are supposed to be salt and light wherever we are. In government, there should be Christians there influencing the policies that the government come up with. Okay? In church, true church, what that Jesus said, people should not be spectators. People should be participants. What about family? The building block of every firm society. These are the spheres of influence that we are talking about. Okay, marriage now today is no problem. People just live the way they want. No, marriage is not a customary thing. Marriage is a covenant, an yeah. unbreakable promise that we make with God. That's why young people don't ride a head around getting just anybody else. She looks beautiful. No, God says, I know the plans I have for you. That includes who you are going to get married to. Okay, he has it. He says, riches and wealth can be inherited from parents. But a good wife is from the Lord. Okay? From the Lord. So, ladies, that means some of us don't deserve you. But God Almighty, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, from the Lord. A gift from God. 
And then, apart from family, education. Education this day is about career. But originally, it was about character. Character. You see, you can be a qualified doctor, but you can be a murderer, killing children. Okay? You can be a lawyer, but instead of being a professional lawyer, you can be a professional liar. Whoever pays you money wins the case. No justice. Okay? So it is about character. What about economy? Without money, we cannot do much. We can't do much. Even Jesus himself, you know, the one we have the, in, in, in the British in culture, they say, he who pays the piper calls the tune. You hear that? That's why this, some, some of these guys with powerful money, they're ruling the world today. So Christians, we should make sure that every resource that God gives into our hands, we make the best use of it for his kingdom. We should do that. What about the media? The media was originally about truth. Do you know the word news the, or the origin? There was a certain king in Britain, okay, many years ago, and he would take send his men to the north, to the east, to the west, to the south, and then they would go with the declaration. Here, 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 you, you citizens of such and such a place, be known unto you in the year of our Lord Jesus Christ that your king so and so declares that this, 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 this is going to happen. Then afterwards, people would discuss. Then they come up with the agreement. Then these guys would come back. Okay? Then they would, the king would say, North, tell us. They would report. East, tell us. They would report. You know, West, tell us. They would report. South, tell us. They report. News. But today, I don't trust the news. It's supposed to be truth. So we need Christians in the media who can actually tell us the truth. What about arts and entertainment? It is not innocent. It is actually discipleship. Okay? So we need Christians with Christian values. I was shocked recently. No, about, two, about a year ago. I was looking at you know, the Ten Commandments and all those kinds of things. Um, David and Goliath and what have you. Then they were depicting the love between David and Jonathan like they are homosexuals. Can you imagine? And this is what is going on. We need Christians who can portray the true picture in the Bible. Okay? So those are the places we need people with. And by the way, every one of us asks this question. Who am I? Your identity. If you do not know who you are, people are going to label you and give you names. Okay? You should know that every one of you is a child of God. You are made in the image of God. And the second question people ask, who am I? Where am I from? My origin. If you do not know that you are created by God, they will tell you, your great, great, great grandfather was a monkey. And then he lost the tail, and you came out of it. And you believe in evolution. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Every human being is created in the image of God. I don't care how they look, if they look like monkeys, as long as they have spirit, soul, and a body, they're human beings. So we should never ever reduce human beings to animals. We should not. And then the second question that people ask is, where am I here? Your life purpose. People ask this. And then, what am I here for? Your assignment, specific assignment. But this one is very important. Where am I going? Destiny. Because every human being knows that when we die, we don't die like dogs and we are forgotten. You, you know that we live to the point whereby there are people who lies and say, no, 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 no. You will come out like, like a mosquito. You will come out like, like a tree. You will come out. But they know there's life after death. The truth is this. This is dust. goes back to dust. Okay? And when they die, this is dust, it's gone. My soul, my mind, my intellect, my volition, even if I have PhD like doctor, okay? When death comes, I can't wave and say, I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in the God. No, you will still die. The true you will go and stand before God. The spirit man will go and stand before God. The one that God breathed in you and you became a living soul will go and stand before God to give account of what you did with Jesus while you are here. So these are the things. Very briefly, I want to talk about 
if we are to achieve discipleship, there are three things that we must follow. One, we must have common vision. Then two, we must have common values. And then speak the same voice. Let's begin with common vision. What is vision? Vision is a preferred future. Unless we see clearly, write it down. Vision, you see clearly. Okay, preferred future. You see clarity in vision. Because Proverbs 29 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Okay, so we must have vision. A family without vision is doomed. A company without vision is doomed. A church without vision is doomed. A nation without a vision is doomed. Because without vision, the people perish. People resort to all kinds of things as if they are just lacking time. Look at Matthew 28. And Jesus came and spoke to them. Who are they? The disciples. Who is a disciple? A disciple is an envisioned, equipped, empowered, encouraged, and engaged member of that disciple. That's who a disciple is. You see where you're going, you have what it takes, and then you are empowered. Okay? There's no need for you to be equipped, and there's no opportunity for you to express who you are and to do what God has called you to do. And the world in which we live is very discouraging. We must be encouraged, an encouragement to one another. Okay? You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And then we need to, apart from seeing clearly when it comes to vision, we need to only seize it, write it down. We need to seize it, okay? We need to seize it. Get hold of it. You remember vision leaks. Get hold of it. In First John chapter 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, okay? You see? They have seized it. It became theirs now. And the same thing with us. We have to have a buy-in for the vision. Okay? A buy-in for the vision. Then once we have got that buy-in, what do we do? We don't sit on it. We sell it, write it down. We sell it. Somebody say, a satisfied customer is the best advert. If you know what God has done in your life, you will tell other people. Okay? You go and tell other people. Say, please, the same God is not a respectful person. He, can, he did this for me. He can do it for you. And then it guess what happened? Out of that, the church will grow. Look at First John chapter 1, if the, the third passage of that verse, part C. This we proclaim. What we have seen, what we have heard, that which our hands have touched, they are owning. Now they are selling it. We proclaim. We proclaim concerning the word of life. We proclaim, proclaim concerning the word of life. You see, where there is no vision, there is confusion. But if you are not equipped, you don't have skills, it brings anxiety. How can I do it? And then if you don't have the resources, you are frustrated. You are frustrated. Okay? But also there must be motivation, the incentives. Okay? If there is no incentive, very gradual change. Very gradual change. That is why we have to be holistic in our approach to ministry. Okay, the second thing is common voice. Write it down, common voice. Look at verse 18b of our uh, chapter, Matthew 28. Saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. You remember, everywhere Jesus went, he talked with authority. He was not just parroting things. No, he talked with authority. And the, the belief system is so important. Your creed, what you believed in, your system of belief shapes for us what you do. Look at Psalm 116, verse 10. As I believed in my heart, so have I spoken. You see, the mouth is the vein through which that which is in the heart comes out. That's why we are warned not to have coarse jokes. No, because there's power in spoken words. Power in spoken words. So your creed will determine your character. Your character will determine your conduct. Your conduct has consequences, whether good or bad. And then it determines your course in life, your destiny in life. You remember very well the story of the Tower of Babel. These guys wanted to come up with a, with a powerful tower that reaches heaven. 
but not for the glory of God, to make a name for themselves. And this has been the spirit that has been in the world. Okay? You look at Genesis chapter 11, verse 6. Look, he's saying, the people are united. This is God speaking. And they all speak the same language. They were united. But it was not for good things. It was for bad things. After this, nothing they set up their heart to do will be impossible for them. You know, the good news is, if we are united for a common good cause for the purpose of God, guess what happened? Nothing can defeat us. It will come to pass. The problem is we get united for wrong things. For wrong things. But if Christ is a super glue that holds us together, nothing can defeat us in this world. Nothing can defeat us. And when it comes to common voice, there must be proclamation. Write it down. You need to proclaim it. Because if you don't speak it, how will people know? Look at Luke 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You know, we are living in the dispensation of grace. Soon this grace will be history. Okay? Soon it will be history. But it's the time for you to speak what you believe, to proclaim. Okay? To proclaim. You can't just keep quiet and then think, oh, somebody is going to guess it. No. You need to speak. Okay? You need to speak. Can you imagine a young man in love with a girl and then later on, I cannot speak, but I'm just, you know. People think, this guy is mad. What is wrong with you? But when you speak, the truth comes out, isn't it? So the same thing, if we love Jesus, we must speak it. We must declare it. In fact, not just speaking. Sometimes it calls for shouting. And my brother, thank you so much for that thing you posted again. We need to revive that thing, you know, of going to the streets again and preaching Jesus. We need to shout it from the rooftops. Hallelujah. The Bible says, knowing the terror of God, we persuade men. Okay? But also, we need to scream it from the rooftops. We need to scream it. We need to shout it. Proclamation is so important. If the church is zipped and is not speaking, we are in big trouble. And that's what the world wants. The world wants the, world to be, the church to be zipped and not to speak. Apart from proclamation, we need to, to preach it, okay? To preach is to declare, okay? To, yeah. You will be my witnesses. A witness is a matter. Missionaries, okay? And that's what God told us. God told us to raise mission awareness. Because the number of missionaries are not going down, 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 down. Look at Romans 10, 14. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? I tell you, in Africa, people know there's a God, but which God? And I'm telling you, every time the team go there, and then they tell them who the true God is, and then they see the truth, where people are being healed, signs and wonders are taking place. People come in their droves, kneeling down, crying and accepting Jesus as their personal savior. But there must be a preacher. That's why I always tell people, you're going to go there, you're going to preach, you're going to say thank you. <laughs> okay? Because there's Christ in you. You see, there's this man called Francis of Assisi. He says, preach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words. In other words, we are salt and light. People really do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. When we begin to demonstrate the love of God, loving people for who they are, it speaks volume. Apart from that, when it comes to common voice, it is not how loud I shout. No, the authority, you remember? All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. So there must be the power of the Holy Spirit. That power comes from the Greek word dunamis, where we get the word dynamite. The explosive, okay? I remember very well. When I was growing up, I did not like this Pentecostal. I used to, I used to hate them. I was a very powerful Anglican, a Protestant, but not born again, okay? But guess what happened? Every time I go, 
I see these people. Then they became born again. And then my prayer was, God, anything that is meant for me in the Bible, I need it. I need it. But this thing, of, bah, 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 I know I don't want it. How can a human being talk, talk like a dog? I don't want it. Then I had a dream. Listen to this. I had a dream. And in this dream, there's a guy who was putting on a black suit. He comes, and then he had a, a, a bag. A, 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 brief, a, suitcase, a briefcase, a briefcase, written diplomat. Okay, this is in a dream. And then the pastor of that church was not was 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 not there that day. And then this guy comes and he picks this. This is in a dream. And then he removed the Bible. And then he goes to Acts chapter two, and he preaches about the Holy Spirit. And guess what happened? In the dream, as he was preaching white flowers started falling on our heads and everybody was down and we were just you know pa, 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 and it was so beautiful coming from deep inside and then i woke up and i was still babbling in tongues but it was but i didn't like it but it was nice so it continued it was beautiful listen to this god is an amazing god that day i went for a fellowship and the pastor, Pastor Kahedja, was not there. I had gone to the state. And a guy, I'd forgotten about the dream. Listen to this. A guy on a black suit gets his back, written diplomat, gets the Bible, begins to preach from Acts chapter 2. Okay? And guess what happened? As he began to preach, people started babbling in tongues, including me. Something was, I was trying to press it because I, I did not go to. <laughs> until I busted into tongues up tomorrow. Hallelujah. Now I understand why Paul says I speak in tongues more than some of you. <laughs> because when we speak in tongues, we build up our inner man. It is the language of heaven. The language of the angels. We are speaking with God. Okay? So it is important for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we have been told, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And then in Acts chapter 1, on one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised. What was that? The Holy Spirit. Remember, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send the counselor, the teacher, okay? The one that you stand between me and you, the Holy Spirit. But wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized you with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. While too many without the Holy Spirit, we cannot do much. There's nothing that we can do. It will be the arm of flesh. It will fail us. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When you become filled with the Holy Spirit, you fear no evil. You fear nobody. That's why I tell the team, you're going to preach, you're going to teach, you're going to lay hands, you're going to cast out devils, you're going to like it, and you're going to say thank you. And when they go there, it is amazing what God does. But that same God that works there is the same God that we're serving here. And it has to happen here as well. We need to believe God for that. The problem is disbelief. Even in Nazareth, Jesus could not do much. Because of unbelief. Because uh, we know his father, we know his mother, his brothers are here with us. This is a carpenter's son here. Who is he? And the Bible says in Nazareth, even the Lord Jesus himself could not do much because of their unbelief. Look at this one here. In 1 Corinthians 2, my message and my preaching were not with wise persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but in God's power. You know my prayer this year, my prayer this year is that God is going to do something so miraculous in each and every one of you as a member of woman that you will know this is God. This is God. And you know what? The psalm that God gave me is Psalm 121. In fact, Jacqueline, the Lord gave you that psalm. Uh, just because of time, you can't quote it now. She has memorized that psalm. God gave me that psalm in November. Okay? I look to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the one who made the heavens and the earth. My, he will not allow my foot to slip. 
For the one who watches over me never sleeps. The one who watches over Israel never slumbers, never sleeps. The Lord will watch over your life. The Lord will take care of everything that pertains to you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not hurt you by day, nor the moon by night. He watches over all of your life. And he says, he will watch over your going out and your coming in. I want you to meditate on that psalm this year. I want us to believe God. I want us to believe God. Because Satan has unleashed his demonic onslaught to kill people. The number of accidents God showed me in November. Okay, we prayed about it, darling. You remember? Yeah. Over the nation of Uganda, I am telling you the number of accidents that have been taking place there are unbelievable. Road accidents. Road accidents. Including at the mission base. Okay, Kambini. A, 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 a bus rammed into a trailer, killing 18 people on the spot. You hear everywhere, there's a spirit of death that has been unleashed in the world. We need to stand our ground and believe God against all. Where there is the shedding of blood for the remission of sin, there's no normal offering. Amen. Every bloodthirsty demon must go in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we need to declare it. Then, lastly, common values. Look at Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. You know, go in spite of the dangers that are there. Why? Because there are some non-negotiable core values. For example, write this one down. Savior. You see, without Christ, the world is lost. Not, not only lost, but doomed. There's no other name left under heaven that may not to be saved except the name of Jesus. Okay? That's why our value must be Bible based. The Savior, look at Acts 4. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Jesus is the only Savior of the world. Can I have a witness in the house? Yeah. And if that be the case, we must make sure that we preach this Jesus. Yeah. We leave it out there. And then, secondly, Jesus is the Savior, but He, he, bring, he brings salvation. Okay, salvation, write it down. Jesus did not come into this world to give us another religion, but a true meaningful relationship with God, our creator. Because when Adam sinned, sin separated us. But Jesus came to save us from our sins and to give us a meaningful relationship with God, the Father. Look at Matthew 1. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. The Savior is ready here. But look at how the enemy has come with all kinds of religion in the world, confusing people. But you and I know the truth. So let's preach that. You know, William Temple, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, he says, evangelism is so to present Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit so that men may come to trust him as Savior and serve him as the Lord in the fellowship of a local church, accountability unit. Okay? So without transformation from inside out, that's not evangelism. That's religion. People are joining the church, but they are not being born again. I pray that none of you is seated here will go to hell because you have a meaningful, real relationship with the Savior, Jesus Christ. You have repented of your sins, you have accepted Christ, and you are on your way to heaven. And then the last thing, when we have common values, apart from the Savior and salvation, souls. Write this one down. God's heartbeat is for the lost souls. Okay? God's purpose in creating mankind is to have eternal fellowship with him. Look at Hebrews 2, 6. But there is a place where someone has testified. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? A son of man that you care for him. Because you're made in the image of God. Let nobody label you and say you're useless. You never amount to anything. No! Look at this. On this scripture. Okay? God is thinking about you every day. Okay? How precious are your thoughts towards me, O oh God? Were I to count them, they would number the sons at the seashore. 
Can you imagine that, you know, every minute God is having beautiful thoughts about you, about me, about us. But the enemy has walked our mind and our thinking. You see, this, this guy said something very powerful, William Temple. He said, yeah, he said, the church is the only society that exists for the benefit of those who are not its members. Can you believe it? These guys who are in, is it baseline club? Okay, we are there for them. These guys who are, yeah. Okay, we need to reach out to them. Just say, hello, how are you? That's okay, okay? Don't begin preaching. No, just say, hello, how are you? Why is your day today? You know? Build rapport, bridges. You never know. You'll do something like that, somebody will break down. It happened to me one day. I was at a petrol station in Uganda. And this, this beautiful girl was having a row with the, 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 the pump attendant. And I came to her and I said, excuse me, you're too beautiful to be shouting like that. She looked at me and she turned at me. You also. I said, excuse me, do you know Jesus loves you so much? She turned around and was looking confused. I said, yes, you are worth the blood of Jesus. She started crying. Do you know, she gave her life to the Lord, and not only her, but even the pump attendant <laughs> gave his life to the Lord. He became one of our sexual leaders here in the cell. God can open doors anytime. Let us be ready in season and out of season. Okay? And then this guy says about resources. Okay? This chap guy, he says, we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very funny one. <laughs> okay. Souls will not come to the saving knowledge of Jesus until we demonstrate the power of God's love. Amen. That is God confirming his words through signs and wonders and miracles. You know, you love the unlovable. Look at 1 Corinthians 2 4. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with demonstration of the Spirit's power. Matthew 8 to 28, our verse. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority, authority, I want you to hear that. Delegated authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. The final, remember, Jehovah has the final word? Say, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And teaching is so important. That's why, as a team, we teach. Somebody say, the church in Africa is one mile wide, but only an inch deep. Okay? Only an inch deep. People don't study. People just hear stories. And yet, you know what? Teaching is so important. Charles Haddon Spadon said something. A time will come when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, the church will have clowns entertaining goats. It is happening. It is happening. And that's why we take team to Africa and we talk to the pastors and we teach them. Some of them called so-called prophets, they don't even walk, not even a carpet, they walk on people. Can you imagine? People kiss their, their shoes as if they are God's gift to mankind. And it should not surprise you, the Bible says in the last days these things will happen. False Christ will come, false prophets will come. So don't just go by what you see, what you hear, no. And then John Wesley say, what one generation tolerates, the next generation will embrace. That's why we must speak the truth in love. We have to do it. So when it comes to common values in souls, winning souls, the presence of Jesus must be there. The presence of Jesus. Okay? Matthew 28. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I always tell God, Lord, I'm not ready to go anywhere unless you are going ahead of me. Moses said, Lord, if you're not going with us, we are not going. For how will people know the difference? The difference is Jesus with us, the hope of glory. Okay? And that's why we should never ever do anything unless we have heard from Jesus. Jesus' presence. Somebody imitated Jesus like that. <laughs> okay? And then apart from this, when it comes to Saul, the presence of Jesus will attract them. But also, if we want the presence of God, write this one down. A heart of purity. 
Remember, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Purity. Okay, without holiness, no one will see God. And that is why when we go to the mission team, I remember a prophetic word coming that you are like pipes. Okay? You are like pipes. So, clean pipe without anything hindering so that the Holy Spirit can flow. And I remember, you remember three months we were fasting and praying and asking God to cleanse us. I am telling you, God moved in power. God did amazing things. It started from right here. Two of us did not have a U.S. visa. And there was a government shutdown in the U.S. And we were stranded. And guess what happened? They two told us there's a government shutdown, but it will take two to three days for us to work out your visa. We started praying. God is my witness. Within 45 minutes, we had the visas. Only God can do that. But you see, we had purified ourselves. We had cried to God. We, there was nothing hindering us, and God heard our prayers. So purity is so important. Look at Hebrews 12. Warning and encouragement. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see God. If you want to see God move in your life, please plead the blood of Jesus. If we say we have no sin, we make him a liar and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sins, he's righteous and just and he's able to forgive us. And I'm telling you, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Tough as the year 22 has been, I believe with all my heart, if we practice some of these principles, we are going to see God move in an unprecedented manner. God is going to open doors. God is going to do things that we are going to wonder. God, yes, it is God. I want us to pray.